I'm going to uh, begin, Joe, just by asking about spending time with the real uh, Billy and, and beforehand, and whether what, what that was like meeting the real guy, and whether that can be sort of slightly detrimental sometimes if you spend too much time with a person you're eventually going to portray. If you have to keep a little bit of distance so that you can really find your own way and root into the character. It's a good question. I one uh, Jean Stefan wanted me to meet meet Billy when I first got the role. He thought it was important and. Um, he'd already spent a lot of time with Billy, so I, I kind of trusted in that. And Billy was a real advocate of my casting. When I met him, I understood why, because he was um, such a fascinating, lovely, interesting, charismatic dude with an, you know, he's very funny, has a lot of interesting life experience. Um, and we got to know each other quite well, and just in the casual off conversations, I learned so much about him and about his psyche and how he might react to certain different different situations, which really just helped kind of color the performance. Um, but you are right in the sense, and, and Billy's actually banned from Thailand, so I worked with him for a long time up, until the build, up in the build up of the film, and then when I went to Thailand, Billy couldn't come, which may have, helped in a way because it allowed me just to kind of grow my own wings and and take take it on as as my own thing um but he was still always available if i ever wanted to skype and i and i used to do that sometimes while when i was in thailand with skype and i'd talk about specifics uh, you know specific sort of drug taking or withdrawal symptoms from, from certain drugs or just talking generally about how he might react to a certain situation in the scene but it was it was perfect for me because I, you know, I had enough I had enough of him, and I could take what I wanted. Um, so so it worked well. You talk about the specifics. I mean, not only was did you have to go, I'm assuming, quite an intense training regime uh, for this role. But yeah, it's when you play a boxer, there's much more to it. It's much about the subtleties of movement and stuff, isn't it? It's not just about looking the part. You've got to look like you've been boxing for years. Was that quite a challenge for you? And also, did you manage to keep up the kind of Training after, so I always imagine that you do all this really intense training for kind of six months, and yeah. the shoot goes over, and then just suddenly, you know, it's like <laughs> eating cake and it all goes to, yeah, yeah. to pot. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'm I'm relatively sporty and fit and, and into kind of martial arts anyway. Um, I'd never done Thai boxing, which was kind of a whole new skill set, but it was important. It was very important for me to get to a place of. The physicality, feeling physically strong, feeling like I could really have a fight, feeling like if something went down and I, I could handle myself. So I just made sure when I got the role that I started doing that from a very a very early stage and started training a lot. And then I think your natural swagger and your natural confidence comes through in, 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 when 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 you're doing that. You you I, you you act, you act differently in situations. Um, so that was very useful, and yeah, I, I still do it to this to this day. I mean, when you when you're training to that level, you learn so many skills that it's it becomes something that you want to continue to do because, you know, you've got you've got this skill set. You might as well use it um, in your own kind of like fitness regime. Were there any points on on set where you got smacked quite hard by accident? Or even, <laughs> even by accident, I don't know what. what was yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> most of the most of the sort of scars and cuts in the film uh, are. Yeah, most of the is stuff the makeup artists is having to cover. She spent most of the time covering up bruises and, and things like that. One particular thing that I remember is I was sparring with the Southeast Asian boxing champion who'd incidentally spent seven years in the prison in which we filmed and showed me the bed you know, in which he slept with 200 other prisoners and we actually filmed a whole sequence in there. And me and him are sparring and he caught me with like an uppercut through my guard and it sent me to the moon, moon and back. And, you have to reevaluate the kind of rough choreography you may or may not have, and 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 kind of I was just grappled him and squeezing the life out of him, and then came back to consciousness and pushed him away and carried on. So yeah, th those those things were happening, yeah. But I think that's part and parcel of a, a movie of this ilk. Yeah, and one of the things I loved about it as well was when the the other characters are speaking in their in their native tongue, they're speaking Thai. Uh, it's not subtitled sometimes, and we're in the same position there as as the character because mm. he's he doesn't know what they're talking about, and that adds a real kind of something quite intense and quite daunting and intimidating about. The film I was wondering about you were you privy to to their dialogue in the script or when you were on set and the, the other the inmates were talking amongst themselves on, on screen were you did you know what what the gist of the scene was or were you almost in the same position as the character just completely unaware I was completely unaware yeah. 
I knew roughly where we, where we had to get in, in in the scene, but obviously they're largely improvised, as you as, as you can kind of tell. Mm -hmm. We know roughly the beginning and the end, but anything can really happen. John uh, Jean gave license to that for for me and for the other actors. So when they are taking the mick out of me and mocking me, and they're all laughing, and and some of those guys are very funny, and they could get the whole cell laughing at me quite easily. I have no idea what they're saying, and the I get I get the gist of what they're saying, um, but I don't really know. But I think that adds to the whole sort of feel of the movie. And just very quickly, um, you're in Ben Wheatley's new one, of course. Yeah. Uh, Happy New Year, Colin Burstead. Uh, what can what can you tell us about that in terms of how your character kind of fits into the story and what fans can expect of of that? Because I mean, when it comes to Ben Wheatley, I mean, we you kind of never know. You can never second guess what he's going to do next because he's kind of moving seamlessly between genres at the moment. Yeah, it's a big ensemble um, family drama. Um, set in a, a, a castle, one of the one of the characters um, comes into money and he rents out a small castle for a New Year's party, and all the family come down. And it's the the ups and downs, uh, and the laughter and the not so funny bits of uh, family dynamics. Um, but yeah, kind of improvised again, and yeah, just very a lot of a lot of fun that one. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!